everyone just after uh, nine o'clock here in the morning in the suburb alone i'm an hour running an hour late we had a few technical issues like forgetting something and leaving it in the office or so in the office now and um, a few good things happening so first one of course is that um, uku actually managed to get around cape horn uh, these positions here uh, for eight o'clock this morning so they're really current they're only seven hours ago and uh, sorry uh, seven minutes ago so uh, you can see Uku's making great time around uh, Cape Horn and uh, he saw it had uh, had it uh, on the on the horizon about three hours three or four hours before he got there very excited you probably saw the post and uh, he's now clear and it looks like um, in the next couple of days he's got some pretty good weather for, for a couple of days anyway until he uh, um, works out um, or has a bit of a rest anyway if we come forward a day there you'll see he's still got light winds so he's beat these heavier winds around Cape Horn come forward another day still okay um, I'm we yet to see where he's going to go he's running off now he might be sleeping or something but um, uh, he might come up here through a stretch of de la mer uh, through the little gap there big tides going one way or the other depending on what's happening and uh, then we'll have to wait and see but after about three days he's got some potential headwinds here still okay at the 22nd i think it's by the 23rd no it's still okay it's all reaching stuff so uh, so he'll be quite happy with that it'll be interesting to see um, uh, when he when he actually makes a change to uh, start heading north into the warm weather so we're all very happy for him we'll actually do a big half hour conversation with him um, sometime in the next week uh, we'll see all his fans see if they want to ask good questions and um, we'll do the same thing we did with uh, Mark Slats when he came around and the same with uh, Jean-Luc so we'll look forward to that and get some of the inside story on uh, um, exactly uh, how he perceived the Southern Ocean legs he's been down there for quite a few months like everyone else and now very happy to be uh, heading north uh, any minute soon he's still going out to the west but it'll it'll happen so let's just come back here and um, a few things um, uh, going on don't be worried about that that's not going to be the case that we're not on real-time weather yet but we'll come back here to real-time weather and Tapio's actually been um, actually sailing in you know I'd call it heavy weather you know he's been getting 35s 40s maybe even a bit higher and if we look at the sea state um, we look at the sea state he's actually had some reasonably uh, solid seas you know he's still in sort of six meter seas there uh, six and seven doesn't say much um, he's not too concerned he just gets on with it and he's been using his foot pedals to steer by he has uh, he can sit under his little dome there he's got two foot pedals um, he sits there ropes going through to the back of the tiller and those ropes actually adjust the tiller as well like the port of starboard and he's doing it to assist the wind vane sometimes in heavy weather all wind vanes have issues you know sailing fast down a wave and then the apparent wind changes and so on so um, through the worst of it he said he was actually uh, not hand steering but sitting inside and uh, using his foot pedals very similar to Bernard Matessia when he has his in inside steering wheel on Joshua so um, anyway we'll go back here to wind and uh, look at, at least he's making reasonable time doing 4.9 knots at the moment five knots that's not bad for barnacle speed and um, he'll be heading right on course so if we come forward a day on that um, tomorrow he's going to start running out of breeze and then if we're lucky let's just keep it up oh, cheapest I um, this is Chinese Chinese bits and pieces here um, if we're lucky he'll get into a uh, into a um, uh, a bit of a calm so let's just see yeah he's got a bit of a calm so that's coming on the 20th of December uh, and maybe by tomorrow night or something is late in the day he might be able to get over the side and uh, have another tackle at those barnacles so moving then forward again uh, he's got some northerlies so he's happy with that so by the 23rd got some uh, southwesterlies and westerlies so he's happy uh, he'll be up here by then now this one well we'll wait and see where it goes but by then uh, 24th this is five days ahead so anything can happen with this I'm not too worried about it he'll be a long way forward by then and it's already gone on that next day so it must have uh, gone north or south who knows so Tapio looks pretty happy in the days ahead um, we'll come down to uh, uh, Istvan now and uh, this has been quite interesting because uh, heading south it was all good he missed this this blow which has now blown itself apart effectively uh, which is good so he didn't run into it but he still needs to keep going south because if you look I'll just click this through now every 24 hours uh, every three hours so in the next uh, 18 to 24 hours you'll see this one sneaking up behind him 
and uh, it actually starts to intensify as it gets closer. But by the time, if he's lucky, um, by the time this weather system gets to this position, he should be down around here. He's gonna just, you'll just see that bottom edge is gonna come through him. So he should be able to handle that. There's probably, uh, you know, 40, 45, not constant, gusting 50, 55. Seas will be, uh, well, let's just have a look and see what the projections are for the waves. Um, seas are going to be six, maybe seven meters um, down here. So you'll have some challenges, but the good news, if we go back there, um, it is moving through very fast because every one of these is three hours. Imagine if he's sitting there, you'll see, uh, oh, I've got to click that, uh, get rid of that again there, get rid of that, hit that, remembering he'd be just on the edge of it here. So three hours later, it's moved really fast. So I think he's going to be impacted by the strong winds for less than six hours and then uh, he'll have you know, 35, 45 knots, uh, some very solid seas, um, and uh, hopefully you know, by then he'll be making, um, making the most of it and heading towards Cape Horn. After that, the, he's get, got a reasonable window. Here's Cape Horn over here. He's currently only, um, let's see, currently uh, about 1,500 miles away, so still quite a, quite a distance, but he's a lot closer than he was a week ago. And um, uh, then the weather coming through looks reasonable for the next few days after this one. So if we uh, scroll it through for, uh, this is two days out, he's got average winds, he'll be across here by then on the 22nd. Uh, so now we're into the 23rd, so this is three or four days ahead. Um, solid southwesterlies. Um, this is, this is, you know, it's not serious, but it's just typical solid Southern Ocean, 35, 40 knots, maybe gusting 45, six, seven meter seas, but it's from the Southwest and he wants to go that way. So um, this is what you expect in the Southern Ocean, not, not epic storms or anything like that, but certainly solid sailing. Then he's got a clear run again. Um, so by the look of it, if this forecast holds true, it's just typical Southern Ocean stuff, nothing deadly serious at the moment, or probably the wrong word, but nothing really serious there, just plenty of challenges sailing south. So, uh, so this far is looking, looking reasonably, um, reasonably okay as well. So let's get back into the main game now for the race leader and uh, we'll find out what's happening. They're pretty much holding their own right now in terms of um, uh, distance apart. No one's gaining or losing anything, um, which is quite surprising. So let's just check that for now. Uh, come on, there's one there. Another one here. Okay, so that's on John Luke's transom. Okay, 800 miles apart. So it's nominal. You know, Jean Luc's maybe pulled away a little bit, so uh, uh, not too bad. Uh, they're holding their own. The the wind here for Mark is uh, uh, uncomfortable. It's he's he's close reaching uh, on port tack. Uh, maybe a little bit of going to windward. He'll he'll hold up as high as he can but also go for boat speed. So he's doing six knots at the moment, which is pretty good. It sounds very wet if you're reading his messages. Um, he just put in another voice report, but he's pretty happy getting sunburnt. And uh, he's caught a fish for lunch, which is kind of cool, mahi-mahi, one of the best tasting table fish you can get. We catch a lot of them in the Pacific. Um, so you'll be all smiles. And uh, Jean-Luc is doing okay as well. He's still on starboard tack. He's doing 5.4 knots right now, right on course. He will hold that all the way, even if he goes right up into the corner, because he knows the further north he goes, the better the wind direction is. It comes definitely from the east and eventually it's gonna slip around the corner of uh, here and around past Recife and so on. And it'll be from the southeast, which is, which is fast. And he's keen to get in be as quick as he can to break away from Mark. Mark's um, doing pretty well, but you can see he's got this whole distance here of traditionally headwinds, all right? So he's only been into it for a couple of days, but let's see, and it can vary. Let's see what happens with the weather for both of them as we go forward. So here's an extra day. Mark's effectively got the same deal. At least it's not heavy winds, so the sea will be down. In, in fact, let's, uh, I'll look at, let, no, let's have a look at the sea now, eh? Um, see what sort of waves they've got. Jean-Luc was only saying, a meet, you know, sort of a metre. Um, yeah, seas are dying off from Mark here as well. So seas will be back to one to two metres max, uh, which is a little bit better on the boat, but the better, easier it is on the boat, the faster Mark will go. <laughs> He'll drive it, drive it harder as well. So, um, so it's a bit of a game plan, a catch-22 for the boat. The poor boat suffers all the time. Um, anyway, so that's day one, going across to uh, day two, hang on, 21. Uh, everything's the same. Nothing's really changing for Jean-Luc or Mark Slat. Jean-Luc will be heading up. He's still not quite in the easterly band yet. 
uh, 22nd. Um, same again, if anything, well, hopefully by then Jean-Luc's up here. He's lightening off. So uh, it's all going to hold, I think. 23rd. Uh, yeah, now Jean-Luc's, he's got to get up there because it's starting to swing down. That means the, the band of Easterlies is moving north. Um, and for Mark, he'll be over here somewhere. He's still got the same thing. He'll be doing the same thing that he's doing now for, for quite some time. 24th. Uh, yep, that band's moving up, and you can see what's happened here. The whole lot, the center of this high has gone up, so everything relatively is, is going up again. That'll be further north, but if, what, what's really, to summarize that, is that it'll be very hard for Jean-Luc to pull away, very hard for Mark Stats to catch up, but they'll both be heading north slowly but surely. So um, that's, uh, that's about it for now. All looks pretty good, and uh, we'll uh, uh, come back with another one. I'll give you another English update on uh, Saturday morning, a big one, and uh, we'll get uh, Christophe on tomorrow with a French uh, tracker update as well. So uh, we'll see you again. Thanks a lot.